Now, our next story is one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible. It's the story of Ruth. Ruth. And uh, yeah, Green Vice, Joe Magnolios, these were some movies in the past. Are women friendships different than guy friendships? Are women friendships different than guy friendships? I've watched my wife over like 30, 60 years, and I've watched how my wife makes friends with her friends, and it's how she makes friends and the nature of her friendships different than guys and, and guys' friendships. Yes, very different. And what you have in the book of Ruth is two women, you don't often get to see this in scripture, two women, best friends, who become really close friends. And it's, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful story of friendship uh, in the book of Ruth. And so, um, but anyways, here's, a, here's what happens in the book of Ruth. There's a series of tragedies happen in the book. Um, first of all, they're from the town of ben Bethlehem. They're from the town of Bethlehem. And she, Naomi, there's a woman, older woman, Naomi, and her husband, Elimelech, are from Bethlehem. And there's a famine in the land. So when there's a famine in the land, what do you do? You migrate, and so you migrate from a lower elevation to a higher elevation because higher elevations get more water. So they basically come from Bethlehem, which would be over here. They go down across the Jordan River, come up on this side over to Moab. Moab's about 500, 700 feet higher, and so what happens is they get more rain over here, and so therefore they come over to Moab to, to get crops. They then settle in Moab, and then what happens? Uh, basically, she's got two sons, Machlon and Kilion. She's got two sons. When two sons are over in Moab, what kind of women are they going to marry? Geography plus hormones equals? Okay, they're going to marry Moabites. So she, her two sons, Machlon and Kilion, marry Moabite women. One of those women, woman is Ruth. Is one of, so Ruth is Naomi's daughter-in-law, and her son marries him. Now, what happens in the narrative, all the men do exactly the same thing. This often happens with men. All the men, what? Die. All the men die. It's usually what guys do. All the men die. Okay? Now, what happens is you've got three women by themselves. Three women in a culture by themselves is that hard? Yes, especially in that culture. By the way, is that true in our culture? Yes. I never forget, I had a friend, a student friend that was down at our house all the time. We kind of adopted her as our daughter. And she was from California and she was out at Winnow Lake, Indiana. And um, she took her car in. She was like our daughter. And we, she was down at our house all the time and stuff. And so then she took her car in and her battery went dead. And this uh, guy named Pinky in uh, where we lived uh, basically had a gas station and he replaced her battery. Now when a battery goes dead, the first question I ask is, is the alternator good or did the alternator kill the battery? So it's not really the battery's problem, it was the alternator killing the battery. So the guy replaces the battery, charges her big bucks for the battery, and about two or three weeks later, guess what? The second ba the battery is dead again, and she goes in, and the guy's trying to charge her now, double for the, for the battery and the alternator, and so she comes back saying, I don't know what to do and stuff. Now question, because she was a woman, did, did Pinky take advantage of her? Yes, she did. And so I, I was furious, and so I got in my car. I, I, I've only done this one time in my life. I drove, and I, I parked my car. He had two garage doors going up for his garage. I parked in front of both of them so no cars could get in or out, and I went in to see Mr. Pinky. And uh, I started proceeding. He had his customers all lined up there sitting there, and I proceeded to tell him that he was ripping off this girl. I did it very gently at first. He got a little bit belligerent, so I raised the tone of my voice, so I was shouting at him about how he was ripping off this young girl. Meanwhile, all his customers are sitting there, okay? Get the point. And so I'm being very over. And then, then he's saying, I gotta get this car out there. There, there. There's an inspection and stuff like that. I get a car out. I said, sorry, I'm not moving my car until you give her back her money. And uh, I, was, I, wasn't go I, I wasn't going anyways. And so finally, the guy gets, so he's hollering at me and stuff like that. Finally, he goes over to the register, what, picks out her check and throws it back at us. And once we got our money back, guess what? We left, okay? And so, but, but, but by the way, did, Okay, and by the way, I, I say out of poetic justice today, if you go down to Warsaw, Indiana, and, and you look and where Pinky's gas station was, guess what happened to Pinky's gas station? This is no joke. Two years later, there was a bulldozer went there, and they paved it and made Pinky's into a parking lot now. So anyways, I always thought poetic justice there. Anyways, but what I'm trying to say is that you've got 
Naomi and Ruth and Orpah. Orpah goes back home, but Ruth goes back with Naomi, back to Bethlehem. You got these women by themselves in their culture. Are they very vulnerable in that culture? Very vulnerable in that culture. And so now what you've got is males all die and stuff. But what's something you miss in the book of Ruth that's really important, the names of the characters. The names of the characters are important. Check the name of this guy, Elimelech. They used to have a song like that in my day and age. It was called Elimelech, Elimelech, Elimelech. Anyways, it was Elimelech, okay? Eli means what? El, El, God, Eli, my God is Melech. What is Melech? King. My God is king. This is in the period of Judges. Who is king over Israel? Elimelech, my God is king. Is this a good name for the period of Judges? My God is king. Machlon and Kilion, the name of the two kids, Machlon and Kilion mean weakly and sickly. What do weakly and sickly do in the narrative? They die, okay? Do you see how these names fit, like, incredibly? Weakly and sickly die, okay? Now, Naomi, does Naomi, does Naomi play off her own name? Naomi, the mother who lost her husband, she comes back and she says, comes into town, and this is in chapter uh, 1, verse... Uh, Hmm. Oh man, I lost it. Okay, yeah, there, verse 120. Don't call me Naomi. Naomi means pleasantness. Don't call me Naomi or pleasantness. Call me what? Does anybody remember that? Call me Mara. What is Mara? Bitterness. Bitterness. Why call me Mara? Because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. The Lord has brought me back empty. I am bitter. I am bitter. So she says, don't call me pleasantness, Naomi. Call me bitter. By the way, just to finish this out, do you know what root means? Root comes from the root that means friendship. Friend. Friend or friendship. By the way, what role does Ruth play in the narrative? Friend to Naomi. By the way, Boaz, and he is the hero, one of the heroes. What, what does Boaz mean? Boaz means strength. What role does Boaz play in the narrative? He's the strong one. Who does it? Do you see how the names, do you see why learning Hebrew is really cool? All of a sudden, this thing, you say, wow, look at this. Just, anyways, it's kind of incredible. Now, on friendship, Naomi and Ruth, Ruth makes this really wonderful statement here. But Ruth replied, Naomi is saying, she's the old lady, she's lost her husband, she's lost her two sons. She turns to Naomi, who's her daughter-in-law, and says, hey, go back to your home. You can't come with me. If you come with me, I'm old. I can't, if I had a child today, you wouldn't wait till he grows up and stuff to marry him. So go home. The Lord has dealt bitterly with me and tells her to go home. And this is what Ruth's response is. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Is that a beautiful statement? Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. Ruth, is Ruth a friend? A friend indeed. And so this is a beautiful thing here. Ruth uh, accepts the God and loyalty. You know, I forgot the one word. There's a word, here's a Hebrew word here that's really beautiful for this kind of relationship. It's the word chesed. And I haven't talked at all about it very much in this course. It's H-E-S-E-D. H-E-S-E-D. One word, chesed. Chesed, actually. Chesed is translated, I've translated different ways in my lifetime. Um, I used to translate it as stubborn love. It's not just love, but it's a love that won't quit. It's a love that won't quit. It's a stubborn love that just pursues. Uh, now in the DASV, I translated it loyal love. In other words, it's a loyal, a love that sticks is loyal. Ruth is loyal to Naomi. It's, and she, she exhibits this chesed kind of love, this loyal love. And so this is a great example of Hesed. By the way, who has the great Hesed of all times? God has loyal love to his people and stuff. So that word Hesed is used. Now what happens here is basically Bethlehem is down here. And I'm just trying to get a little geography on it. Moab is up there. So they migrate from Bethlehem over there, Elimelech, Machlon, and Kilian, and Naomi. They marry, all the guys die. Ruth and Naomi come back to Bethlehem. Now, let's kind of finish up this story. Do circumstances affect one's view of God? Do circumstances affect one's views of God? When I was younger, I was told circumstances shouldn't affect your theology. However, look at this. Call me Mara because the Almighty has made my life bitter. I went away full, 
but the Lord has brought me back empty. Do circumstances affect the way people look at God? My son just got back from Afghanistan. He was shot at almost every day that he was over there. Question, did that affect how he views God? Has he had to really wrestle with how he thinks about God when he's seen people blown up right now? Okay, yeah, it affects how you view God. Your circumstances affect how you view God. And I'm thinking, deal with it. Okay, you got to deal with it, okay? God is the same God, but, but do be aware of that. Now, Ruth goes out, she's a gleaning machine. What's gleaning? Gleaning means she goes out, remember the guys go out and they sickle, they take a sickle and they knock the stocks down. When they sickle the grain, what happens? Some of the grain falls on the ground. What do the poor people do? The poor people follow behind picking up the, the, the grain that the reapers drop. Basically, the reapers drop grain accidentally and the, the poor people go to get to pick up. That's what's called gleaning. What happens? Ruth goes out gleaning then. She's with the poor people trying to glean food. Does Boaz notice her? Boaz notes her and he says, everybody knows that you are a virtuous woman, a VW. Where have you ever heard the virtuous woman before? Proverbs chapter 31. He calls her a Proverbs chapter 31 woman and he says, she, and the guys tell Boaz that she's been out there working all day and things like that. She comes home then, she's got all the stuff. Boaz, does Boaz take care of her? Boaz says, you don't go into anybody else's field. You stick with my field. Is Boaz trying to protect her? Don't go to somebody else's field. Stay in my field. Does he tell his guys, drop some extra grain for her? He tells his guys, drop some grain for her. She goes home, she's got all this grain. Naomi says, hey, whose field were you in? She says, Boaz's. And all of a sudden, Naomi, matchmaker, matchmaker, she says, Boaz, Boaz is related to us, you know? And so she tells, basically, she coaches, um, she, Boaz, Basically, she coaches Ruth and says, he's going to be up on the threshing floor tonight. When you go up there, uncover his feet and lay down next to him, and he will tell you what to do. Now, by the way, when she goes up and uncovers her feet, uh, his feet, remember what I told you about feet in Hebrew? Feet can mean something else, and it probably, in this context, does it mean that, that he, she uncovered his feet, probably means something else. Is she offering herself to Boaz? She offers herself to Boaz. Is Boaz going to tell her no? Now, by the way, anybody else in the period of Judges, a woman offers herself to the guy, you know, okay, it's over. Okay, Boaz says he can't. Why? Because there's a kinsman redeemer closer than he is, and he's going to tell her no. Now, she has offered herself. Is she going to feel hurt that she's been rejected? She has just offered herself, her whole self to him, and he's going to say no. Is she going to be hurt? And so Boaz tells her, don't be hurt. You are a virtuous woman. Everybody knows that. And he tells her, he says, I've got to check with this guy that's closer, the kinsman redeemer than I. And if he says no, I will marry you. And so he, he tells her no, but does he honor her? Does he, I don't want to call it flattery, does he compliment her? Does he compliment her? And does he spare her dignity? Does he tell her to go home before the lights come on so that no one will know she's there? And she, he, protects, he protects her reputation and he gives her stuff to go home with and stuff. This is called the leveret marriage. When you've got to marry someone, you know what I'm saying? We've seen this before. Someone dies in the family, you marry into the family and you raise up kids to the, the person that died. This is called the leveret marriage where you have to marry the person uh, and then raise up children for the person that was dead. Now you say, wait a minute, Hildebrand, why is the story of Ruth in here? In chapter 4, Ruth is the great-grandmother of guess who? David. Okay, Ruth is the great-grandmother of David. In the last chapter of Ruth, you've got a genealogy going from Boaz down to David, which means then that what? The story of Ruth points forward to whom? To David. The book of Judges, last chapters with the Levite, points forward to Saul. Do you see how these two stories set up the first two kings of Israel in a kind of a really neat way? So the story of, of, of Boaz, Boaz is what? Strength. Does Boaz protect her? Does Boaz protect her? And that is a really important role, uh, protector role. Boaz fulfills that. And we are done. So.